A cool feature available with extruded objects is something called an internal constraint. An internal constraint allows you to do a couple of things. It allows you to carve a hole through an extruded object, or it allows you to enhance a bevel on an extruded object. I'm going to show you how to do both things in this lesson. To follow along, open up Photoshop, and let's make a new document. File, New. I'm going to go with this 1200 by 1200 document. First order of business is to show you how an internal constraint does not work with a 3D mesh preset. So I'm going to go to Mesh from Preset here and select Cylinder and create that. There we go. Kind of tip it toward us a little bit. There we go. Now I want to make another cylinder by extruding an ellipse. So I'm going to make a new layer. Turn this one off so we don't get confused. Click on the Shape tool. That's an ellipse now. I'll draw out something like this. There we go. And it's a path, so I'm going to change the source from selected layer to work path. Make a 3D extrusion. Click Create. And now we have a cylinder there as well. We can click on it. We can tip it down like that. Let's compare the two. The one behind it there, I'll take this one in the front and kind of match it up in terms of its angle, like so. Make it a little bit larger. We can kind of make it similar in size. All right, so we have two things that are very similar. That little funny stuff on the top there, that'll go away if I render this. I'll just click on render just to show you that it will disappear. There we go. Just a little anomaly when you make things from a path. So now let's take a look at the two things. We've got this one down here that's an extrusion, and we've got this guy here that's a preset. I'll click on the preset. Let's take a look at its properties. It has three properties and then coordinates. So just three properties and coordinates. Not much going on. It has only three materials top, bottom, and the cylinder. I go up to the one above that and click on this one here. This is the one made with the extrusion. It has more properties. It has those three, plus some presets and some other things down here. Plus it has these other guys up here, deform and cap, along with the coordinates. Many more options when you have an extrusion. Another big difference is that you cannot create an internal constraint with a mesh preset. Let me show you how that works. I'll go down here and select it. Turn off the one on top here so we don't get them stepping on each other. The way you define an internal constraint is with a selection or a path. So I'm going to tip this guy down toward us and draw a selection on it by going over here and grabbing the selection tool and drawing, let's say, a rectangle right there on it like that. And now if this were an extrusion, I could go up to the 3D menu and click on Add Constraint From, but you notice it's grayed out. You can add a constraint from one of two things, a path or a selection, but it's not available when you're working with a preset. So in case you run across that, that's what's going on. Let's see what happens when we change over to the extrusion. Click on that to make it active, make it visible, turn the one below it off. There's our selection right there. I can perhaps move the guy right into the view there so we can see it like that. That's the original shape of the ellipse, and it's on the other side. That little blue line there is telling you that the ellipse is way on the other side, not on this side, not on this end. So I need to go to the actual original path or shape that I used to create this extrusion which is on the other side of this object. So I'm going to twist it around to that side. Now you notice that the blue line goes away. All right, I got this thing selected. Now I go to 3D, and now this Add Constraints thing is active. I click on Current Selection, and it looks like nothing happened, right? But if you go down here, you notice there's now a new internal constraint listing here inside the Scenes panel here. I click on that, and you get this little option over here now to make it active or inactive or a whole. Inactive means it's almost like a waste of time to make it, but you can't sort of switch things off. So I'm going to change it to hole. And boom, we've now carved a hole through this object. How cool is that? You can carve a hole just like that. What's also kind of neat though is switching over to active. So I click on it again to make this active, change it from a hole to active. And now it looks like nothing's happening, right? But I'm going to go now to one of the presets, click on this and change the preset to some kind of a beveled preset like that, for example. And now it has a kind of pillow effect. And you can adjust the depth of this thing using some controls. So if you have an active internal constraint and you add a bevel, not only does it bevel the outside, but it bevels that little active internal constraint as well. Well, not only can you create these internal constraints from selections, you can create them from a path as well. So I'm going to back up here a little bit, go back to the extrusion here, like that. And now I want to use a shape. So I'm going to click on the shapes over here, put on the custom shape. I have a ton of shapes here. I've already got my fleur de lis selected, so I'm going to go with fleur de lis. And just put a fleur de lis here as a path. If it's a shape, it'll create a new shape layer, but as a path, it stays on this layer, which is what you want. I'm going to do Control or Command T to select it and kind of center it up a little bit like that. There we go. 
and press the enter key on the numeric keypad to accept that. So now I want to create an internal constraint from that path. So I've got that layer selected. I go up to 3D, go to add constraints from, and now it'll be a selected path. Now I've done it. Doesn't look like much has happened, right? But I go back to 3D here and you'll see we now have an internal constraint there. Click on that. Instead of being active, let's have it be a hole. And now is that not cool? I mean, just think of the possibilities when you use something like this, that you can carve these holes through there to match those shapes. Let's switch it over to active, like so. Click on this guy and try a preset, just to show you some of the neat things that you can do when you have this very sharp looking thing like so. And we'll talk about doing these bevels in an upcoming lesson. So we'll do these things in more detail as we move along. Now I want to show you one more sort of gotcha that I alluded to moments ago. And that is that you have to have the selection or the path within the original shape that you use to create the extruded object. I'm going to go back and start this over again, back to history. And we'll just go to the extrusion again. All right now I'm going to take this extrusion and kind of play with it. I'm going to click on it to make it active, go back to 3D so you can see it there. And I'm going to just do a preset here that's kind of unusual. Go on down here to this preset, twist it around like that. Let me just slide it over a bit so you can see it. And we'll just make it a little bit smaller so you can see it as well. All right, now I want to take a selection. We'll say we'll get the selection tool here and we'll draw a selection right there. Like I want to carve right through it there, which would be kind of cool. And I'll try that. I'll go to 3D, add constraints from, and current selection, and I'm going to get a message that says, cannot add constraint because the constraint you're adding must be completely contained within the top inflation surface. In other words, it has to be within the thing that you use to create this object. I'll click OK. Let's try something different. I'll do Control or Command D to deselect that. I'll draw it in the wrong spot over here on the right hand side. Even though it's within the circle, it's on the wrong end. Try that again. 3D, add a constraint. Again, same message. That's not going to work. Control or Command D. We'll do it over here now. That's the original ellipse that we used to create this thing. Now I'll go 3D, add a constraint from current selection, and boy, it's happy now. There's the new internal constraint. I can make it a hole. And we'll carve a hole all the way through this object. Is that great? So that's how you've overcome that little issue with the constraint. It has to be on the original surface that you use to create the object. So there you go. That's how you create internal constraints to create holes or enhance bevels here in an extruded 3D object.